Hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in, because in this video we are going to take a close look at the S905 H3, one of my favorite boxes you can get now in 2022. There are many boxes just for sale, it's absolutely a jungle out there. And if you are like new to this, like so basically what you're going to get are Android boxes combined with ME Alec. By the way, the software that you can download for free and just build yourself an emulation beast. But the thing is, you have like these boxes, they are like modified and have some extra things to it that we're going to talk about today. So in the jungle there is so much you can pick up. And the S905 X3 come also in many different form factors. And I mean like when you're looking at the main board or better said the Android box. But these were like some, yeah, something different. I really love it, what they're doing over here. They're modifying the boxes, making them better. In the beginning when making these videos, I was like complaining extremely like about this problem that we're having, that we did have the problem that these things were getting really hot and they made a solution for it. And that is also like why I really love these boxes. But what are the difference and why is, like should you consider think about getting one? So compared with all the other versions, this is just completely modified. And I think the price you're paying for it, it's a complete kit. Think about you're going to get yourself like the box itself modified with the fan and you're going to get some like some chemical places you two controllers. You don't need to really be happy about them. But again, yeah, they're like usable. But inside the box, we're going to get ourselves like the special Super Console X Max Plus. Crap, did I open it on the wrong side? Yep, I did. Wait, wait a moment, wait a moment. Ah, there it is. And with these boxes, we can do some we can just do some freaking awesome things when it comes to playing retro games. <laughs> Here you can see that we have like two different cases and the reason I wanted to make this video because this is in my opinion the best box you can get if you want to get yourself like the best performance for your money. Because these are like not the most powerful boxes, no 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 no, because the most powerful one will come with a price like freaking magic and that's the thing that I really love about these things. But of course you can always grab like a random S905 X3 Android box, slap ME Alec on it and you will have like a game box for a lot less than this. But again you're paying for something that is more like ready to go. Another thing is kind of funny, I didn't like made a video about it yet, but I know like there are like kits out there that you can like modify your original boxes. Yeah it's not going to be super easy because you need to do some soldering, what you can see over here. Because these boxes are like modified so the voltage need to come from one of the usb ports 5 volts they even use some hot glue very nice i think they did an amazing job over here and the same story is applying to this here you can see like we do have like a completely different like pcb but it is more like depending like what kind of mainboard they are using but let's talk about the specs and what makes this thing so cool compared with other versions so this, this thing is called the Super Console X Max Plus 2. I also like to refer this thing to the X3 Supreme because this thing is something new. They did use old technology like always because these are like budget boxes. We're going to get better MULX support and of course our typical places to knock off controllers. Okay so this is the quite confusing part but I was ordering a couple of these boxes myself. I noticed that like, there are so many different versions and uh, let's say the marketplace is a little bit of a mess. But what are we going to get with the connections? We're also going to talk about the power. But this thing is completely better than the other models reviewed. Like think about the Super Console X Max Edition. Because this is the plus. It comes with more power. And it comes with a nice display at the front. And better cooling. But okay. So what are we going to get with the connections? At the left side we're going to get two USB ports. One 2.0 and one 3.0. But it depends how you want to connect everything. How many players you're going to play. Because if you're going to play alone and you just want to use Wi-Fi, two USB ports will be more than enough. We're going to get ourselves a separate dongle for the Wi-Fi capabilities. I don't like the two ports because yep, if you want to play with four players, you have a problem. Because we need to have the USB hub. And the USB hub, this thing what you're going to get is a freaking piece of flimsy chemical plastic. And it's like the cheap to the cheap cheap, I will not even recommend using it. So that is something you need to replace and get a better one. Okay, here we're going to get two times audio jack out. What I understand the AV out doesn't work. RG45, HDMI out, an optical out. But the biggest bummer is that we don't get an on and off switch. So at the top we're going to get a very nice LID RGB fan. And this fan is quite silent. I'm going to put the microphone up front of the fan itself. You can just barely hear it now. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a nerdy time with Wicked. So we're going to get basically an X96 Max Plus 2. This is basically the board they are reusing for this. Board type is the Franklin, comes with a quad-core Gore-Tex A55 running on 190 
1.8 megahertz g31 for the gpu ram 4 gigabyte storage 32 gigabyte internally and they're going to get 256 gigabyte with the sd card there is also like a 64 and a 128 gigabyte edition the amialic version is 4.3 and the android edition is 9.0 so when booting up this is the menu where you're going to get it works quite simple it comes pre-installed with play store google chrome but also the option to add or better said sideload your own apps with the app installer i just want to point out this thing also supports 4k youtube and you can play some netflix but take consideration netflix because of the rooted device you can only use netflix on 480p if i'm saying it correctly so that's all like a little bit of bummer with these cheap android boxes from aliexpress so for gaming that is purely what we're going to use it for but first let's try some ada 64 like double checking the specs there is only one downside because of the main board the older edition it is you cannot install every single application so we're going to try out ida 64 that will be installing without any problem but i tried to install for example in gamecube emulator and there were some other applications that didn't want to boot up on this so take consideration there are some limitations to this it's still an old piece of hardware and yeah even the one to install dolphin it doesn't even matter because it doesn't run gamecube places do stuff like that it's not just powerful enough. Okay, so we already talked about the specification, but I just want to give you a look with Ida64. So you're going to get the X96 Max Plus 2. Here you can see like the board is Franklin, 4 gigabytes of RAM. So they don't were really lying with the saying on the product page. So the specification wise, I think it's similar to the Super Console X, if I'm saying it correctly, the Max Edition, because they are reusing the same kind of hardware. So the G31, the Mali, the GPU, it's not super bad at all. So, but I think what is quite interesting to show you is that the Android version is actually 9 Pi. So when you're looking at the previous model of the Super Console X versions, they're also using this old school 4. Another thing is quite interesting is the thermals. It's just putting on idle, but it gives you like a quick overview. Here you can see like it's, it goes around 3 Celsius. And with the normal Super Console X, we were hitting up to 50, up to 60 Celsius sometimes. So the CPU cooling is absolutely way better with this casing. We're going to get ourselves the game system and all the necessary stuff. So what you're going to get is the game system itself. We do have a remote because if you unplug the freaking, let's say SD card, we do have the option to use like an Android box. Here we have going to have the power supply that is in 5 volt, 2 amp, and it even comes with the on and off switch. And the funny thing is like with the previous like systems, we didn't have an on off switch. So they figured, let's put it in the power supply so a very good solution and then we do have like the hdmi cable but let's take a close look at the system itself but what do i mean with the game changer to begin with like this box is absolutely improved in many different ways for the people familiar to the channel the super console x lineup is a kind of a mess it's a jungle like the pandora's box jungle we have so many devices but this thing brings something new to the table especially when it comes to the casing itself okay so this is the brand new version we have reviewed in the last years we have reviewed all kinds of super console game boxes but this thing is completely new the shape is very nice we do have like a black and translucent and like an ice color that's like semi like translucent i really love like this thing how it looks it comes in a very nice fan at the top like the previous one that have been sold straight onto the mainboard over here they even use some hot glue so when it comes to the teardown in this video it's not necessary of course because we can already see what's in here so we do have like all the ram chips at the back and at the front later on we'll talk about like the specification list so when you're looking over here how they made everything they did a great job like they did like implement like a very tiny passive cooling block but i think it's more than enough because we have an active active cooling but let's take a close look at the connections at the front we're going to get ourselves like this old school display that we have seen before with android boxes because guess what this thing is an android box or the base of it on this side we're going to get ourselves the usb 3.0 port and it's sd card there's 64 128 and 256 gigabyte and take consideration the bigger bigger is not always better simply because yeah the problem with that is is that we do have like a lot of like game pack solutions but not everything has been configured correctly we do get an extra usb 2.0 and at the back we're going to get even some more ports okay we're going to get ourselves the internet the rg45 then we're going to get a jack out we do have an hdmi out we even have like an optical out and of course the input for the power supply there is no on and off switch i understand there was like the previous one like the first one with the s905 chip that has like an on and off switch the x31 didn't have one and this one doesn't either have this one because the android boxes don't support it so far i understand with most of these things so 
we do have an on and off switch over here so that's going to be super convenient if you just want to turn it off so that's a very positive thing i'm guessing they're like listening to us and basically like try to improve it even it's like a basic solution like this all right so let's take a close look at the specifications so this is the brand chingo the h and x3 type so then we do have the chipset as the s905 x3 so i've seen it before in previous boxes it's basically in quad core ram comes with four gigabyte storage capacity 32 gigabyte and of course we're having like different sd cards and we talked about it before and of course we have android 9 and emu alec 4.4 but how about the noise level with this RGB fan? Oh, by the way, the RGB cannot be turned off, if you're wondering. But okay, so let's talk about the menu and the software itself. What can we actually play on this and what makes this thing such a great value and price balance? So when you're looking at the menu, there's nothing much change when you're looking at the older models. Of course, I'm running on newer Amiya mean, Alec versions, so that's a first of like a big plus. Besides that, we do have like so much stuff we can play now. So with the old version, we did have like the same things, problems with N64, but it doesn't been changed with the S905 A3 or these models. We do have like slightly better performance and overall like it's still mixed, same goes for PlayStation Portable, but when you're going to get into Sega Dreamcast, that we have like slightly better performance. We even have like new options, think about Sega Saturn, but of course Sega Saturn is going to be like a mixed performance too. Later on I will show you what I mean. So that's basically what you're going to get with this. It's still like flat, it's still like underpowered for a lot of things, but then overall when you're looking at what you can play compared with the cheaper boxes, I think you pay a little bit more for this S905 X3, but you're going to get way more options when it comes to compatibility with new emulators and of course the general quality is way better when it comes to the overall performance and again there are some things that will not run will not run even on the more powerful boxes but it's something we're going to talk about in a different video so let's take a close look at some gameplays what we can expect of these boxes Okay, so let's take a close look at Sega Saturn first, because this is the new addition to the Super Console X series. And yeah, when you're looking at the Emmy Alec, it's a pretty cool piece of software, and the Yaba Sensiro, I almost know for sure that it's running on this. But when you're looking at the box, it's just not powerful enough to, to, to run the three-dimensional games. And what I'm noticing is that it will have some hiccups here and there. But when you're looking at like other games, two-dimensional games, there we're going to get a good performance with Sega Saturn. It's the same story that we had with the previous models. Two-dimensional games are less demanding and will have like better performance when it comes to more demanding systems. So when you're looking at the Sega Dreamcast and in combination with this new box, we're going to get better performance. It's still not perfect, but I'm noticing like the Dreamcast will run the mostly of the games just fine. So when you're looking at the more demanding games like Dead Alive 2, there we're going to get quite a good performance. Where we have a lot of problems with the S905, the first editions, the X3, will run these games better. <laughs> But PlayStation Portable will always be a problem on low-end boxes. You can see the background is glitching like crazy and there we're going to get a lot of problems. And if you want to play some three-dimensional games, don't even think about it because there we're going to get a lot of frame dips and problems. And that is the thing with these cheap boxes. For PlayStation Portable, that are like the really demanding systems. We need to just have more power like a mini PC or a higher powerful mini Android box. And N64, how about that? It's quite simple. N64 will always be a mixed performance when it comes to low powered boxes. But with the X3, now we're going to get slightly better performance because the CPU is clocked higher and this emulator works better on this. But don't get me wrong, like the more demanding will still have a lot of problems. Think about GoldenEye. All right, so that's a good start. Where are my buttons? Oh, there they are. Okay, when progressing in the game, it will get a little bit better, but... So that makes me wonder, like, are they just using the wrong settings for this game? Like, a wrong emulator, or what's going on with this? Because you can, like, it runs now just fine.
but here it goes again. But the main reason I just tried this game, I just wanted to see how it runs. But again, I think it's just some reconfiguration that's needed. Alright, so next up, let's try some N64. This will always be the system that doesn't run perfectly on the machine, but some games are playable. One of my favorite games I like to try out, Blast Course, I play this game so much. So much fun to play. But also a great example like how good it will run. You can already hear like it got some minor hiccups. But it's still playable. Yeah. But an overall performance is not bad at all. Alright, so next up let's jump into MAME. And with MAME I'm going to test out Mortal Kombat 2. Mortal Kombat 1 will run just fine on these boxes, but just Mortal Kombat 2 and 3 will give some issues sometimes. So let's see how they will run. So far so good. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So when you're looking at these boxes, we now have like the option to play like the other main games oh by the way like if you think about killer instinct like more demanding tekken you just need to have more power so that will not work on this device but some Mortal Kombat games run just fine okay so next up let's jump into playstation portable so one thing is for sure is like these boxes cannot run god of war or the really demanding games but i'm curious like how and what we're going to get so we are running now at let's see 30 fps so this thing is able to run some casual games but it will notice here you can see like when there's a lot of action going on it dips back to the 20. so some two-dimensional games run just okay but that's the main problem with these tiny game boxes they are fun to play some playstation portable games but it's just too demanding we need to have at least like a mini pc and with mini PCs you can even like push them to let's say higher resolutions. I would not be surprised that this box even has some frame skipping enabled. That it even like doesn't run otherwise. But yeah this is what you're going to get with the PlayStation Portable. I just wanted to give you a quick look in the PlayStation Portable menu. And here you can see like over here frame skipping set to 1. So that's basically what they're doing with these cheap to the cheap cheap boxes. To keep it basically like still playable or playable. I think it's not really playable. I think it all runs like shit. Okay, so next up is Sega Dreamcast. I've noticed with these chipsets, we do get some better performance, especially when you're looking at the first generation of the Super Console X machines. We do have like the speed that we need to have with this game. Oh crap, oh crap. What I do like about these boxes, we do have so much stuff we can play with it. You can hear like a minor dip when you're having like a lot of explosions. Alright, so if you want to play some pinball, it's all possible with this system too. I don't see any 3DS possibilities, so you're just stuck with the old school, the DS versions. I really like they can switch between the way how you want to show the displays. I'm just going to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of this. And the reason why is because, like, in, in DS, I love it. But when you're looking at the way you just, like, play it, I'm not the biggest fan of it. You know, like, you need to have two separate displays, which you have with the original system. Let's do free play. Let's see how the experience is. So this is what I mean, like... It's cool, but I don't know. No, personally I love, love this view. This is just like how the original system was intended to play the games. Not like you're having this play left and right. <laughs> uh, what a horrible pinball game.
Okay guys, so let's do a quick teardown. So the cases are very easy to disassemble. The only thing that we need to do is get ourselves a multi-tool kit from AliExpress, for example, with a very tiny embus. Otherwise, you cannot get it open. There are only like four of these embusses that you need to remove. And you can just lift up the top cover. So let's cut it over here. And I will show you how you need to do this. So what I do like about it, it's just a basic fan they're using with the normal two pins connection so if you want to basically replace it with something else you can do that fairly easy or if you have any problems if you just need to replace it you can get your one from your local store or maybe aliexpress you can replace it remove four screws and you're done done with it so these plastics can be removed this one goes a little bit difficult but okay so what you can see already here is that this is just a basic tv box that we have seen before only they removed the old casing and they slapped it in the new case so i must hand it to them they're trying to improve on the low budget way Okay, so here you can see it says the X96 and it comes with 4 gigabytes of RAM over there. Then we're going to see a sticker that says 4 gigs of RAM, 32 gigabyte internal storage. And that is basically what we're going to get. It is old school stuff. It even comes with some old school Wi-Fi antennas. Here we can already indicate that is an old piece of equipment. Here we can see, I think that is not really the production date. This is the version 4.1. So that is not like the first edition. Okay, so here at the back we can see like they added some extra cables to the main board it is not original they soldered that straight onto the port for getting the five volts needed for getting the fan to work okay so but this is basically what you're going to get it's an old tv box inside a new case i must hand them to them give them some extra kudos for trying to improve the system the conclusion is very simple this is one of the best boxes you can get in 2022 when it comes to performance, cooling and the thing you can do with it. Of course this thing is a little bit more powerful than the previous one and if you want to have like better performance for Sega Dreamcast and just want like better performance or for let's say some other devices, yeah N64 will still run like shit, that's the same thing like with PlayStation Portable. We have some games that are playable but mixed performance is something you will have with these cheap boxes. I think particularly what you're going to get with this minor bump, you pay a little bit more money you can choose a fancy case if you want to have like a square one or you want to have like a different form factor. It doesn't even matter. This is what you're going to get. Let me know in the comments what do you think of this. Would you consider this the best one for your money or do you prefer to have another one? Thanks for watching. It would be great to see you in the next video. So consider subscribing, hit the little bell and it would be great to see you in the next video.